<laughs> all right, all right. Put the clown down. Uh, hey, hey, man. man. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Leave that in. Leave the put the clown down in. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. Uh, hey, man. Have you ever heard of? Uh, oh, wait. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Is that when this episode comes out? January third. Great. Yeah. Oh no, January second. Oh man. That means it's getting closer to my show in Berlin, Maryland, <laughs> in February, <laughs> or in. Uh, hold on, hold on. I don't Jerry know how Myers. to say this. I don't know how to say this place in Idaho. Hold on, it's, I got you. I got you. I got okay, you. I got okay, you. Let okay, me do it. Okay, Let me okay, do it. Okay, Let me do it. Let I'm going to show you the place. No, I'm looking it up your schedule. You don't need to tell me what. What's the date? April thirteenth. April 13th. Holy cow. That's way out there uh, Not ooh, from right uh, now. It's getting closer cord to Allen. Yeah, cord 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 de Allen cord de Allen cord de Allen. I don't know how to say that cord cord lane. It's probably a chord lane chord lane. You think it's chord lane. Yeah, that O E U R chord lane C O E U R E or no, it's not an E C O E U R. That's chord. I think it's chore cow chore Darlene coward Jordan Idaho. I think April 13th. Yeah. Court at Merlin's Cordellini <laughs> tort. Yeah. Uh, anyways. Hey man, have you ever heard of <laughs> Marvin he Meyer Marvin he Meyer? Yeah, I don't know if we're saying that one right either, but I'm that's positive. all right. We'll run it. <laughs> it's Marvin uh, C O E U R M E Y E R. Okay, <laughs> uh, Marvin Hemeyer. Uh, you might know him by his uh, more infamous title. Uh, <laughs> okay, Killdozer. <laughs> this is not like a typical like front loader. This is a beef boy bulldozer. A uh, beef boy. <laughs> this is a beef boy bulldozer. So they were like reinforced, so that way they could run trees over. Oh jeez! Um, not like big trees, but like trees. I know? understand. There's a <laughs> reinforced concrete bulldozer <laughs> hitting your building. I don't know how that could be more clear. Things I learned last night. Dylan, Dylan. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you ever heard of him? The, is this about murder? Uh no. <laughs> okay, kill dozer. Yeah, technically no. <laughs> what is he? Technically no. Kill dozer sounds like a monster truck. It's more about attempted murder. <laughs> okay, less actual, more attempt. All right, so we're we're not like a true crime podcast. We're a true yeah. almost crime we're podcast. We're dabbling. Yeah, we're we're. We're yeah. dipping our he we're dipping our toes in true crime the way he dipped his toes in murder. Didn't yeah. fully commit. Didn't make it. Okay, but. It tried. All you right. Know? So this is an attempted murder story. Yes. Well, I, I, our, who's the kill? Allegedly. Dozer? Allegedly. We don't know for sure if it's Did he try to kill somebody with a bulldozer. We don't know. It's uh, allegedly he didn't though, but uh, it depends who you ask if he tried or not. We don't know for sure. Okay. Let's just with a bulldozer. Yeah. Let's just tell the story. Oh wait, but before we do, I got these energy drinks today. From a guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I'm putting that in my body now. Uh, he told me from a guy. Uh, he said, "What do you do, man?" I told him what I do, and he's like, "That's cool." And I was like, "What do you do, man?" And he's like, "He's like, oh, he's like, he's, he's like, I'm just trying not to work too much." And I was like, "Oh yeah," and I was like, and he's like, "He's can like, you, yeah. can you set the scene of where you met this guy? Is this on the streetcar?" I can't. <laughs> so here's I on can't the streetcar. That this guy goes, <laughs> "Hey man." <laughs> no, this was at a. Uh, uh, Tropical Smoothie Cafe. I was eating lunch, uh, and he. This is not he, better. He came up to me. Tropical and Smoothie Cafe is the streetcar of cafes. <laughs> he came up to me and he asked me about my tattoos, and so we talked about my tattoos. Dude, that's how people. A that's a that's a cult. Yeah. Uh, 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 that's how people are are roping you into MLMs. <laughs> this is an MLM. Yeah. So he asked oh, me about my tattoos. He Dude, asked bro, me about my they tattoos. do that. Did he invite you over to his house. Yeah. Look at look at the logo in the bottom corner. Yeah, the second he said it, the second he said it, um, he told me he told me. um, Yeah, he told me a guy offered him a couple of these and he said, oh my gosh, these are the best thing I've ever tasted in my life. So if you're unfamiliar Amway targets people with tattoos for some reason because it's an easy way to start a conversation, but they 
they will invite you over. You'll think you made a new friend. They're very personable and then you'll go to their house and they'll have like a whiteboard in their freaking living room and everyone's in business casual attire yeah. and they'll just run you through the pitch. This happened to me, but it wasn't like at a house. It was a, a guy church? that I had known in high school. Oh, was it a tropical smoothie cafe? <laughs> Close. This was okay. It was a guy I knew in high school okay. who we, we were living in Springfield. Yeah, and he was like driving from St. Louis to Oklahoma or whatever. He's like, "Hey, man, yeah. I'm passing through Springfield. Let's grab coffee and catch up." And I was like, "Oh, sure, man." I said, "Are, well, are you are you stopping in Springfield long?" I mean, it's it like it's like a Tuesday night. Yeah, and he's like, "No, nah, man, I'm just passing through tonight, and it's yeah. already like 8 p.m." Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, I said, well, sure. He goes, yeah, man, that isn't mud house downtown open late. Let's just stop there. Let's meet there at like 11. Oh, no. And I was like 11. Okay. <laughs> and you know, we're we're living yeah. at that house. Yeah. We were staying up till one in the morning. Anyway, yeah, that's college life. So I was like, fine. sure, yeah. man. So we, yeah. I met him there at 11 p.m. 11 God, that makes me want to throw up. That makes me literally want to make myself throw up. Like if someone invites me to that, I walk in and I go, hey, how's your evening going? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's what I do in that scenario. Don't invite me to something, at especially 11. at eleven. <laughs> at eleven <laughs> p.m. PM. Yeah, yeah. So I go to Mudhouse. Yeah, and he starts talking about <laughs> how his new job is great. And I was like, "That's really cool, man." Yeah, and he's like, "Yeah, man, I'm just really hustling out here," and it's an Amway pitch. Yeah, at eleven p.m. on a Tuesday, from Did a guy a I had not talked to in several years. <laughs> Did you buy in? No, I threw up all over him. <laughs> I did exactly what you wanted me to. You learned well, but anyways, yeah. So this guy, uh, this guy we, comes up because I love your tattoos. Yeah, which immediately talk, is like, oh, okay. We talked for a minute. He had tattoos too. I don't want so, the cola. I like want we the talked, wild berry. I was going to ask you which one you wanted. So we talked for a minute about tattoos. He had a couple twos telling me about what his meant or whatever, <sighs> and he asked me what mine meant, and I said, no. Yeah, are you looking at the B twelve? <laughs> Why is there that much B twelve in here? There's that's. The B twelve is the, like you're about to overdose on B twelve, bro. I mean, like B12. Celsius has a lot of B twelve. I thought <laughs> this has almost seven times the amount of B twelve, which is a nutrient that your body can't like really. Yeah, like it's not necessary for Celsius to have it in there. Yeah, it whatever. doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. So after this, we'll go work out. This is like freaking. <laughs> It's this insane. is like opening the vitamin C gummies and eating all of the them. whole thing. We might see the hat man if we drink this. <laughs> <sighs> How much caffeine? No, is but it? then then uh, so we talk a little bit about work or whatever and he and anyways he is uh, and then the conversation ends with the uh, person from uh, tropical smoothie cafe. Oh, it's only 114 uh, milligrams of caffeine. So I mean, it's not terrible. Yeah. But Not terrible. I mean, our conversation ends with the person who works there, Tony, walking up and handing him the food because he's a door dasher. Uh, <laughs> and then so he's like, he's like, I'm gonna take this delivery, bro. And so he, there is nothing like, I'll see like later, trying man. to pitch see you around <laughs> your pyramid scheme while you're door dashing. Your door That's at the time I met Brian Regan. Uh, uh, was Brian Regan door dashing? <laughs> yeah. No. So I met Brian Regan at 54 Street. Yeah. I walk in. That's crazy. And he's at a table, and I was like. Brian Regan yeah. and uh, we're sitting there chatting. He's very nice. Yeah, and is he alone? Because he, he had just he's with his manager. Yeah, and they had just done the comedy club. And I was like, yeah. I'm a comedian. You know, I was just a big fan. Of, you know, we, so we're we're chatting there, chatting or whatever. Yeah, and he goes, you know, how's comedy going? And I was yeah. like, well, I'm I'm door dashing right dashing. now. So <laughs> pretty good. So, great. <laughs> so Brian, if That's you see great. this, I don't door dash anymore. I used yeah. to be a door dasher who did stand up. Yeah, you know, and now I'm a stand up. Who, who does, does DoorDash? Dash. It's a mindset. <laughs> it's a mindset. All right. It's all in the head. I also sell <laughs> drinks, and yeah. I have an Etsy They're store. They're so good. I also sell things on Etsy. <laughs> <laughs> he said. He said. He's. Uh, but anyway, so he he goes out, jumps in his car. I thought he's gone. I go back to watch my video and eating my chicken pesto. And he comes back in. And he goes, comes back in with these cans. Hey man. And he's like, he's like, he's like, hey man. Hey these, dude, I decided my, my dasher could wait. <laughs> the person whose food I have, that's gonna they're gonna get it cold because you are gonna get these cold. <laughs> All right. They're gonna get some cold ones, and you're gonna get some, you're cold, gonna get ones. some cold ones. <laughs> yeah, he said. He said uh, these ones are on me. I hope to see you around. I don't know why that it's called excess. Uh, yeah, and he well, it's because of the excess B twelve in there. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, uh, he said, if you're listening and you're like doing the Amway thing, I want you to know I mean full offense. You're he might be the dumbest person I've, I've ever met. He told me he said he said you want to know the best part about these and I was like what he's like you can't get them on Amazon you can't get them at Walmart. You can only get them from me and I was like, oh, that is <laughs> that the, is the best, best part, part of these because I don't know your name <laughs> and I have no way of contacting you and I just got to order a lot of DoorDash in hopes that you're <laughs> no my dasher. You're the dasher. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I, I, Bro, I have spent so $7,000 on Hawaiian bros. <laughs> And I, bro, I got hooked on that. That oh. beat, like, hit me with that B twelve, oh, bro. Oh, I need that B twelve. <laughs> so Are we gonna try, try these? <laughs> yeah, let's yeah, let's try them. I hope it's awful. I can taste the B twelve. <laughs> uh, that tastes. I taste it. I literally taste the B twelve. Hmm. I mean, it does taste like cherry cola, like just like cherry cola. If, how many of these I got to sell to get a helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> I think it says in the disclaimer on the side. He told me he said he went straight to the top. He didn't. He didn't talk to the guy who first gave it to him. He said I went straight to the board. Six people up there. I talked to one of the guys <laughs> on the board. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's the way you got to do it. If you're in a pyramid scheme, you realize it's a pyramid scheme. You yeah, got to jump. You got to jump. You got to jump up. up. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, like the person who's trying to put you in their downstream, you, they're in your downstream, <laughs> and you're like, "Yeah, thank you so much for doing that." Yeah, thanks, appreciate it. Um, hey, you got to respect the hustle. Yeah, I don't, but you're you gotta, I guess. Thanks you're supposed for the drinks, to. You're, you're supposed to respect the. You're hustle. supposed to respect the hustle. I don't. Yeah. So here's to you. What was his name? Ooh. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> know that your marketing skills were awful. You're really bad at this. Hey, and you're gonna fail. But this is pretty tasty. I will admit, I do. I'm not against it. I hope. I hope this hits. In the middle of this episode, Jared and I are gonna go into anaphylactic shock. <laughs> I've already had two Celsius today. I don't know how much more B12 <laughs> I can take. All right. Anyway, so let's talk about Marvin Hemeyer. Let's, I mean, let's like put the Amway logo. Can we put here? Let's do a. Well, you know, we might as well. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by Amway. <laughs> if you want these energy drinks, you're going to have to find that random door dasher <laughs> in Lee Summit, Missouri. Blue Springs. In Blue Springs, <laughs> Missouri. Maybe. <laughs> Just order as much as you can until he shows up. He's and ask out him there. Whenever, whenever they ring the doorbell, just be like, hey, do you do Amway? <laughs> and uh, and if you would like to flush some money down the toilet, you can go to <laughs> Amway.com, sign up, buy a lot of products, give them away for free while you're door dashing. And I'm sorry, I'm really trashing this thing. There's yeah. there's got to be somebody who listens that does listen to our podcast yeah. who does Amway. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it's not a bad drink. I'm kind of enjoying it. Zero sugar. B vitamin, lots of B vitamins. Dilly Uncommongoods.com. <laughs> you can't get this there. <laughs> can't get this there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Marvin Hemeyer, I'm trying to find a picture of this that I can show you. And you'll understand what, what I mean by that in a minute. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> Stop. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get me to spit on this carpet. I am. I am. It's just so good. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sacrifice that B12. <laughs> I've got to get all this B12 in me. So Marvin is Fred. Uh, they they had had their eyes. Are on. you sure to show me a picture? Uh, yeah, you want to see Marv? Yeah, uh, this is Marv. He Meyer. Okay, <laughs> I why understand you why you were hesitant that? to show me that. Yeah, you know what? He's got a really hot hairline. <laughs> <laughs> That's some alpha male pattern That's baldness. Some alpha male pattern baldness. <laughs> um, so him and him and his him and his friend, Babe and I, in this property in Granby, Colorado. This here, this is a good parcel of land. Uh, they want that shop on the land, right? Okay. 
Uh, they want to open up an. Uh, well, they, they weren't sure. They just wanted to invest in that. Maybe a muffler shop. Maybe a welding shop. Maybe okay. a car shop. Maybe rent it out. They don't know. Sure. Um, so they've been eyeing it. <clears throat> uh, they go. They approach the owner, and the owner's like, uh, "Yeah, you can buy it for one hundred and ten thousand dollars." And this is in nineteen ninety one. And okay. like, we think that's overpriced. Yeah, and for so the shed. Like, yeah, they're like, nah. Um, <clears throat> and so they wait, and then they find out it goes into foreclosure auction. So 91, they go up to this foreclosure auction, and they said, top line, we want to spend on this 65000 So if it, if it passes that, we won't take it. If it's under that, we'll take it. So they go in. There's 150 properties in the Granby area that are in a part of this auction. And so it's going through property after property. Him and his friend are sitting there watching it all happen. This property comes up and they're like, okay, this is our one. This is our bid. They bid 40,000. $1. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, yeah, the, the, it goes up. First bid is 35K. And so they and see then a someone guy goes $110,000. <laughs> and then uh, just looks around the room. <laughs> and they're like, that guy can't do that. That guy's the owner. He's not allowed to bid He's on not this. Allowed. He's not allowed. Why? I want it. <laughs> please give it to. Please, I want it. You didn't pay last time. Yeah, but if I'm I buy gonna, it now, I'm gonna do it now. If I buy it now, I can reset. I yeah. reset. They're it's, like, you should pay that hundred ten thousand dollars on fixing your voice, you <laughs> muppet. They really bullied the guy. It's a loophole. The <laughs> banks don't want you to know this secret. <laughs> the buy banks don't property. want you to know these three secrets. <laughs> One. One. <laughs> All right, go ahead. One. Buy your property back at the auction, and then they can't do anything about it. It's two. Yours. Two. You Talk. can't get this property from anybody else. You and can only get it from me. <laughs> and three. If you talk like this, they have to listen to what you say. They can't tell you to shut up. And if they I, do, sh- they're breaking. Sh- <laughs> I couldn't do it. I was trying to tell you yeah. to shut up. I couldn't. It's against the law. You can't do it. No. So <laughs> they, uh, the uh, the guy up front. Bids thirty five thousand, and he's like, he's like, oh, we're gonna Marv. He's like, oh, we're gonna get this for under what we want. Okay. So he raises it to forty, and then the other guy down front stands up on his chair, <laughs> <laughs> really escalates the situation. Sure. Looks back at Marv, and then says forty five, uh, and so Marv. Marv is like, all right, 50. 46. <laughs> no, it goes. He goes 50, which he should have said 46. He's yeah. jumping. They're jumping too high. They're You're jumping too much. Yeah, uh, so they jump to 50 and then the guy looks at him and he's like uh, sits down and Marv gets the property for $50,000. The whole auction ends and the guy up front uh, walks up to him and just chews him out. Uh, in front of everyone in this okay. like, auction house, there's a guy by the name of Cody Dochev, and Cody um, he is he owns a concrete plant in town, and I guess he just wanted to expand his operation to sure. this place, but he didn't want to spend more than forty five thousand apparently. Yeah, and so he chews out uh, Marv, and they kind of get into it, and he's like, he's like, how dare you take that property out from under me? Like oh, I've been wanting that. I was talking to the owner about picking that up when it came to auction. I told and- everyone I wanted her. <laughs> I mean, the it. <laughs> I wanted it. I wanted it. I want the land. Did you say her? Yeah. I, uh, I want the land. The land is. This a sounds her. like it might be about something else. You know. <laughs> I think. I think you're. What else is Tommy mad about? <laughs> <laughs> His name is Cody. <laughs> I know, but it was a. That's a callback. To our show. <laughs> what we have a show? What is this? All right. <laughs> I don't remember anything. You I'm cut off from the B twelve. <laughs> I don't remember that bit. Cody, Cody. Um, eh. Can we leave in the part of this episode where Alex wanted to bail? Yeah, I didn't can. want to bail. <laughs> <laughs> I was here the whole it time. It seemed like you wanted to bail. <laughs> no, I've been here for all 27 <laughs> minutes. Hey, thanks for being part of this episode. Uh, if you want to help us do more of this, you want to help us grow our show. One of the easiest and best ways to do that is to join our Patreon. Uh, it's a way for you financially to support the show, and you get a lot in return. You get access to our Discord channel. You get bonus content that comes out. Uh, you get exclusive merchandise and like live Zoom hangouts where we're both just hanging out, eating pizza, just getting to know each other. The biggest thing is, is we want to know you uh, more as an individual and as a friend. So thanks for supporting our show. If you don't support us financially, we're not pressed about it. We're not like mad, um, but I'll find you. So text till to six six eight six six to keep yourself from being found. All right, because if you don't, I will hunt you down. <laughs> hey, 
so Cody, uh, Cody and him kind of get into it, but it's like whatever. They yeah, the whole thing happens, and Marv walks away, being like, "Man, that guy sucks," but whatever. Like we got the property, so they go to the property and they start kind of uh, scheming, planning what they're gonna do with it. Yeah, uh, and they really let's let's paint the building that just says. Cody sucks. <laughs> Cody sucks. But like a really good paint job. Like the best like, paint job in town. Oh, good. Paint this job. isn't just like Cody sucks. Spray Cody paint. sucks. This is this looks is, like a graffiti artist. This is like freaking this is a mural. NFL stadium. Yeah. It's beautiful. I want it to light up at night. <laughs> <laughs> it, it lights up when you drive by. It's got motion sensors and turns Cody on. sucks. Cody sucks. You put a little you put a little <laughs> NFC tag on Cody's car, right? Yeah. So it only lights up when <laughs> he drives, when he drives by. by. <laughs> no one else. And it's so bright. And the he, entire town dude, can he see thinks the light. He's crazy because he yeah. tells other people, he goes, go drive by. It'll turn drive on. By, it'll turn they on. go nothing. Nothing. When he yeah. drives by, it turns on. Turns on every time. Now you're in his head. <laughs> <laughs> You're really going to ruin his life because you're taking his <laughs> land and potentially someone's taking his wife. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we think. It seems like sure. he's got some kind it of issue like going something on. Something else is happening here. Um, so, what do they want to do with it? So he uh, pretty much immediately the city contacts him and was like, "Hey, thanks for buying that property. Glad you got it. Thank pretty you for cool, that, huh? Um, by the way, can't uh, have it." <laughs> They said, by the way, uh, so the last owner, the previous owner was in a lot of trouble with us and now you get to be in trouble uh, because this is your property now. It's your problem now. And so what had happened was uh, the previous owner, instead of hooking up to the sewer main uh, from that building, he decided to put in um, uh, a septic tank. Uh, But instead of installing a septic tank, he took a, uh, a concrete mixer truck and took the mixer part and buried it underground and just ran a hose to it. And that was his septic tank. Uh, and they were like, that's not allowed. And now it's yours. And since it's on your property, so you have to dig it up. <clears throat> they're like, yeah, not only can you not use that anymore, but we need you to run a sewer line out to the sewer main. The problem with that is the sewer main. Uh, How is, much does it cost to do that? Well, typically the sewer mains on the street. And so it costs a few thousand dollars to just dig it out and then run it to the street and hook it up to the okay. sewer main. The problem is with the way this property is laid out, the sewer main is not on the street in front of his. It's on the next block over. So they have to go underneath the street. They have to go from his property underneath the street and then underneath the other set of properties and into the sewer. So he got it quoted and it was going to be $18,000 to run this new sewer main. And they said, also, by the way, you need to talk your neighbors into letting you put an easement in uh, a maintenance easement in because that's also um, required required and you're the one who would be using it. So you have to no one and they don't say that before you buy the property. <laughs> no, and they were like they were like, so yeah, you need to uh, this feels like my apartment complex, <laughs> <laughs> not the one I live in now. The one I live yeah, in now is pretty the old, great. The old one when I say my apartment complex, you know who I'm freaking yeah, talking about. It's them. <laughs> so Marv uh, is like, well, this is jacked up and I don't want to do that. And he's like, he's like, he's like can he just sell the property? He's like, he calls Cody. He's like, hey, Cody, hey, Cody, I got an idea. Hey, 45,000. Uh, so he says, all he yours, says, man. He says, no, that's ridiculous. I got a septic tank. I've got a solution. I'm going to do that instead. You guys are stupid. Um, okay, which is a really good course of action to take with the government. It goes works out really well for them. So he goes he, he actually gets into a legal battle with the city over this, mm. but he plans to continue using the septic tank. And so in the meantime, he's like, he's like, I can't operate a normal business out of it, but he's like, I can't go get this zoned as a boat rental property. And so he splits the unit into three units, puts a garage, big garage door and a normal size okay. door, and then he rents it out and pretty immediately gets three people to rent it out, put their boat in um, and keep it over there through the winters and stuff like that. And he's like that covered my mortgage payment on it or loan payment, whatever he, he got probably a mortgage. And I was good. And while I argued with the city about what was going to happen with my septic line. Okay. And so this became a big issue and he started to feel uh, like the government was like a good, bo- good old boys club, you know, like the local okay. government, the local government. This yeah. town. Cause this town is not like a, this is not a big town. Yeah. This is a town of like, I don't know. Hold on. I'm pulling up the, the population. Uh, it doesn't even say here. Oh wait. Oh, 2000. Oh, okay. So, so it's this like, is like Mount Vernon size. <clears throat> yeah, 
and uh, and it's like a little mountain smaller town. than Mount Vernon, but yeah, yeah, it's a little mountain town. Uh, Mount Vernon's a mountain town. <laughs> Where are the mountaineers? I don't uh, <laughs> uh, uh, name name a mountain near Mount Vernon. Mount <laughs> Vernon, <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a mountain town. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. You're wrong. It's a that. suburb and it's a mountain <laughs> oh, town. Don't get me started on the suburb thing. Uh, <laughs> so uh, he starts getting. Mine's Did gone. You finish this? Holy cow! I'm not even halfway through mine. <laughs> uh, Robert, can you can you make me glow? <laughs> Thank you, Robert. <laughs> Thanks, crop crop. All right, C- crop daddy, <laughs> crop dust. Anyway, did we did we call him Crobert in an episode? I was thinking that this morning. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> he knows about that. That's his name. <laughs> You're right. Sorry. Of course, he knows his name. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, Marv is now in this long going dispute with the city council. Crop Schneider, and <laughs> he feels. <laughs> He feels as though um, odd bod crop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying right now. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, so he feels as though the city council is a group of people who are uh, they have a stranglehold on the town because they are <laughs> <some> people who <laughs> live there. Easy, Todd. <laughs> they because they've lived there the whole life. Like yeah. there, there's um, there's this one family that owns a construction company, okay. and the the sons are now running the construction. Yeah, company. they just know everybody. And, yeah, 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 the yeah, only yeah. reason they're still there yeah. is because their grandfather bought like half the land and yeah in the town, and you know was there before anybody else. What and there's still not a lot of people there. You know, it's that kind of a, a small town politics. You know, uh, and he's getting very frustrated dealing with all of it. Um, finally, ends up uh, just saying, "Forget it. I'm not putting up a muffler shop." Turns that property into a muffler shop, and as I'm using the septic tank, it's fine. It's not a big deal. You can you can deal with it, and so he does this from ninety two until two thousand three, running the, eleven years. Yeah, running the muffler uh, business out of there. He's a welder, develops a great reputation as a welder in town. Everyone's like, if you need something welded, he's, he's your guy. This is the guy. He's the only guy in town, <laughs> but he's yeah. also the best guy in town. The other guy welding. mysteriously died. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Um, in a welding accident. Yeah, <laughs> in a welding accident. They say they his body's never been found. I will say a serial killer with a welding mask, though. It's pretty, pretty scary. scary. <laughs> uh, so he uh, he's he opens up his welding company. He starts doing welds. He is a um, an avid snowmobiler, and he develops. He builds like this crew of snowmobilers okay. uh, that goes out all the time and snowmobiles around town. Not around town, but around like the outskirts around of the, town, around. around the mountain, around uh, the actual mountain that was there because it's a real yeah. mountain town. No, I grew up in a mountain town. I know how it works. There. <laughs> yeah, so they're snowmobiling around, and, but it's like it's, this is like a snowmobile crew. Like sometimes it's like five or six people that go out, but sometimes it was like, upwards of seventy. Oh my god! Go out and snowmobile together, and he would made these bumpers for everyone's snowmobiles, and so he would hook these bumpers on them, which they come with bumpers, <laughs> but he hooked an extra bumper on them, so they were like reinforced. So that way they could run trees over. Oh, um, geez, not like big trees, but like trees. I know? understand and just I wasn't thinking they were taken out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not dumb. <laughs> oh, take down. You know, at least two of them died because they are dumb. Yeah. You know, they're like, I can hear trees with this. I, I can hit trees with this thing. Yeah, I bet we could hit each other. That's with like this when thing. I got my wife or Jeep and she was like, now I can run over parking curbs and I said, <laughs> Why is it the first thing you no, said? No, didn't even don't say do thank that. you yet. <laughs> you run just over said, "Oh curves. my gosh, I can't wait to hit I a lot of curves." To run stuff over, um, and so he's he's getting more and more frustrated with the city. Yeah, um, I'm getting frustrated with the they're city. They're continually uh, continually taking him into city council meetings and disagree, arguing with him over the septic thing. Um, and finally, in 2003, they slap him with a fine. Okay, for not setting up the the tank, and the fine was a hundred dollars a week for the. Entire period he's been there, so it was a few so it was like fifty five thousand dollars. Yeah, so. um, a, of a fine, and so he had to. He he actually he wrote this. He wrote the fine, and uh, he like did this thing on the check where he put like to the establishment or something like that, like something like 
this you guy know, really and, stuck and it, gave to, it the to them and then they shipped it back and they were like this checks invalid and they're like you have to do it right and he was like I oh, forget you guys uh, so he had to rewrite the check so him and the town have a bad relationship that's point number one point number two uh, he's opens up this muffler shop is running this muffler shop and in 99 Cody Dochev is like it's time to expand my my concrete batch yeah. department or whatever and so he buys um, a parcel of land right next door uh, to his muffler shop and is trying to get it zoned to be a concrete batch sure. center. Uh, Marv thought that this was not okay for a couple of reasons. One, he hates Cody. <laughs> Hate him. <laughs> Two, he thought that the zoning didn't make sense because there's on the other side of the street, there's a bunch of hotels and then on the other side behind him is a neighborhood. And so he said that if they're mixing and making concrete right there, there's going to be a bunch of pollution and noise right there. And he said that's not right for zoning. You can't put it there. And so he started arguing with the city council, but him and the city council already have a terrible relationship. They're like this guy again. Yeah. And so he starts going to all the public hearings about it, trying to shoot it down and ends up delaying the uh, The thing about getting into public hearings. Yeah. Yeah. Just go just going. I mean like what else am I doing? I mean, do you think that's a good use of your time though? Yeah. I mean like just to go observe and be involved in my local government. Yeah, you know, yeah, it sounds like it sounds like when people do that, it does sound like it actually like, you know, is beneficial and things happen as a result. Like yeah. I've heard a lot of people in the new neighborhood I live in. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty great. I, I think it's going to be pretty good because uh, it's Montrose up near and so the Montrose Christmas parade ends yeah. with Santa in a helicopter. I'm not joking. <laughs> he flies over and there's a car running the parade route with a spotlight. <laughs> Yeah, that is just shining up on Santa hanging out of a helicopter. That's you know, pretty like, sick. Oh, you know, is so, it a real person or is it like an is it, I mean, it's a real person yeah. hanging out of a helicopter. That's pretty cool. And uh, so that's the kind of neighborhood. I don't I don't live in that neighborhood. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we do this for you live next to the this is my you're watching my job. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me where you think I live uh, and uh, yeah, but Interesting. It's pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to go to there. So you're going to try to be Santa next year, is what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try to get. I want to get some inroads. And I'm be like, hey, gaining let the weight me be so Santa. much right now. <laughs> I'm like, hey, um, that guy's getting old. So he starts arguing against them in the city council. Yeah, meetings, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he actually does delay. Like he brings up some pretty valid points about the noise, and and like, about the pollution. Okay. Sure. And so like it does delay things, and it forces them to figure some stuff out with the new concrete plant before they can open it. But they do figure it all out and. Then they the city it. was like, yeah, now you can do this. And so he opens it up. He builds it. And while they were in construction, he calls uh, Cody calls Marv and in an opportunity to kind of like let it all Clear be water the, the bridge. Yeah, he calls him and he said, hey, we're in the middle of construction right now. Yeah, and he's like now's the best time. He's like you guys want to run a sewer main through here like we can add that on. You just cover the cost of labor and he's like and all actually and he goes, I knew you were on the side of the city. He says he says I'll actually go ahead and just throw the easement in and I'll cover that and so like a really generous offer. And okay, Marv just hangs up on him. Doesn't even respond. Just hangs up on him <laughs> and so that was a that was a really generous offer. Honestly, yeah, just hangs up on him. He's like all you gotta do is take that Cody sucks thing down. <laughs> yeah, all you gotta do is like I I'm not gonna lie. It's blinding me every time I drive by kind of sucks. Yeah, I gave I actually my son. I he he has my car now. I gave it to him. He just turned 16. Yeah, and now every time he drives by on his it's on his route to school. He just sees Cody sucks and you actually changed it. It says your dad sucks. That's, pretty, <laughs> that's so that's pretty rough. rude. It's very rude of you. <laughs> and the D doesn't light up anymore. <laughs> Is it your dad or your ad? <laughs> your ad sucks. Your ad sucks. And he's just like, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, weird marketing over here. Mean by that? I was thinking of Cody. Yeah. The D and the Cody didn't light up anymore. It just says Koi sucks. <laughs> Koi sucks. <laughs> your dad. Anyway, uh, your so dad. <laughs> your Neither dad of the D's. Sucks. Your A sucks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're like what? What? You're a sucks. <laughs> you're a sucks. Uh, so Cody. Uh, so this whole thing, uh, his relationship with Cody is getting more and more strained. His relationship sure. with the city council is getting more and more strained. Uh, so this item two, item three. There is a local paper, and when he opened up his muffler shop, the local paper, the photographer swung by the uh, the muffler shop and was like, "Hey, uh, what do you say about 
like doing a free ad in the paper, like just to be like, hey, we got a new a new business in town. If you guys need any muffler repairs, this is your guy. And he's like, okay. that sounds great. Like, let's do perfect. That. They um, ran it. And then he was like, he's like, all right, I'll come back next week. We can take some photos. We can do an interview and we'll, we'll get you in there. Sure. And he's like, cool. Um, and so uh, the, the guy comes back. Nobody's at the muffler shop. So then he's like, well, I'll come by tomorrow because why tomorrow? No one's there. Tries again next week. Tries again the next week. And then eventually just gives up. Marv, from his perspective, the guy said, hey, I'll put you in this thing and then never came back. But really, Marv just was never working because uh, <laughs> there wasn't a lot of work to do at this muffler shop in a town of 2000 people. There wasn't a lot of people who needed muffler repairs. So where so was he, he at? wasn't around all the time. Yeah, uh, so allegedly, allegedly he worked two to three days a week. Um, the rest of his time he was snowmobiling or he's a man after your own, own heart. Uh, <laughs> he was in his hot tub. So Marv is really mad at the okay. city council at the city paper and at at Cody Dochef and a bunch of other people in town now too. He just feels like everybody's out to get him um, and it's it's boiling and it's boiling and it's boiling and you can probably try to convince yourself that they all conspired together. Yes, yeah. and it seems like it because they are all friends like it's it's a small town. Everybody knows each other. Everybody yeah. has grown up together. He's the outsider. He came in from Boulder and bought this property and so nobody like nobody there knows him. He knows he knows everybody and that's uh, sure. Uh, yeah, he just feels he feels on the outs and he spends a lot of time alone in a hot tub thinking um, <laughs> which you know what that does <laughs> <laughs> doesn't lead to <laughs> any good places. Uh, so he he has this idea um, and he says I'm going to intimidate Cody. Cody's got his <laughs> <laughs> Cody's got his, his little concrete plan plant right next door. So he says I'm going to intimidate uh, uh, sure Cody either next door neighbors and so he goes to yeah, California. He, he goes to California and at an auction he buys this uh, and he okay ships it home and parks it in the driveway. How much does it cost at, to ship that home? It's uh, a bulldozer. It's a yeah, it's a bulldozer and it's not like this is not like a typical like front loader. This is a beef boy bulldozer a beef boy. <laughs> this is a beef boy bulldozer. Okay and parks it out on the driveway and Cody's going to see it and, and go, Cody's going to oh, be like, oh my shoot, gosh, this man. guy means business. This is now. not the That's guy to a mess big with bulldozer. Uh, yeah, so he sets it out there a couple days later, puts a sign on it that says for sale and it's, it's like that for a year um, and everyone's like, why did he buy that? Everyone in town's driving by and they're like, why does he have that? Like he's it's a muffler shop. What does he need a bulldozer that big for? Uh-huh. Uh, and so everyone's very confused about what's going on here, but it's like wait for a year. Yeah, it's set there for a year. It says for sale, right? Okay. And so, year later, uh, <laughs> uh, well, I should say, um, after this sits there for a year, he moves it into the building, and it's like it's literally like inches of clearance fitting through the garage doors. And so he gets it through the garage doors, and everyone's like, "Well, that bulldozer's gone." And that bulldo, and now a whole another year passes of it being parked inside. This is to intimidate Cody. So this is, this well, is really getting him. Well, it started out. It started out with it out there intimidating him, and then he moves <laughs> he it in there. out there intimidating him. <laughs> yeah, he's like Cody's like intimidating sh- him, shivering in his snowmobile boots. And so he decides. He says. He says, "I need to cut my losses." Um, and so he sells the property, sells it for four hundred thousand dollars, which is a huge profit. Yeah, he really cut his <laughs> losses there. <laughs> uh, sells it for four hundred thousand dollars. The next day, the new owner puts in a sewer line and an easement. Um, and cool. he, but he requests. He says, "Hey, can I, for the next year, Keep lease out there. lease out just that unit that I have a bulldozer in. <laughs> that I'm using that I he have doesn't something tell in. Them, yeah, he doesn't tell them like, what, what do you got doing. in there? He's something. Like, he's like, I'm working on a project. He's like, could I just keep that? Lease that from you, and they're like, but yeah, whatever, like, that's fine. It's like fully. I mean, so so to get into his bulldozer, he's got to like, you've been in a really tight parking spot and try to open your car door, <laughs> well, and you got to be like, it's the unit. <laughs> <laughs> the unit isn't that small. the The door is that small. The unit is not that small. <laughs> Cody better watch out. <laughs> he better. Uh, is he intimidated? Hey, tell me. Look at him. Is he intimidated? Can you see him? Does he look intimidated right now? Do you see him right now? <laughs> does he look? He does he look intimidated? <laughs> How scared are you right now? Uh, Cody. <laughs> Cody, are you scared? I'm going for you, buddy. You're gonna knock the bookshelf over. <laughs> Here I come. 
I'm coming for you. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. Uh, if you like this one, we've got a lot of great past episodes that you can check out. Uh, one of my f- recent favorites is Frank Abagnale Jr. It's the dude from the movie Catch Me If You Can. Um, and it's the story about how he uh, scammed everybody into a really big scam. There's one scam that's like the scammiest of scams I've ever heard someone scam. Uh, so check that one out. Uh, it, it's, it's a fun one. I like it a lot. Uh, but thanks for being here. Um, Are you intimidated? <laughs> <laughs> no, the unit is not. The unit is not small. The unit, the door to the <laughs> unit is small, but the unit is like got a lot of space. Okay. And he actually, so he started working on this project in there um, <laughs> okay. that, with the bulldozer, um, but he didn't want anyone to know about it. And so when they got it inspected after they first moved in, what's he putting like blades and stuff on it? Or well, something? he put a big old a big old tarp over the bulldozer to cover it up, and the inspector came in and was like, "What? What do you got there?" He's like, "Oh, it's just a project, it's a project I'm working, I'm working on." on. And like, okay, and they didn't ask to look under it or anything like Is that. He building a giant battle bot. So he, uh, for the next year, spends a year. And he's a welder, and so he's. Is he making a giant battle bot? He's reinforcing this bulldozer into this. Uh, what? And what he did is he made it bulletproof. Yeah, so he put he just made a homemade tank. Yeah, yeah. So what he did is he he reinforced the entire thing welded on steel around the entire like body cab of this of this bulldozer and then he actually took concrete and there's three inches of concrete between that and another layer of uh, steel and he welded it all together and uh, he also uh, there are on every direction. There are these little portholes and the portholes have two inch bulletproof glass on it and behind there are cameras and all those cameras feed into a control room. He's got inside with screens. How do you get inside? (laughs) There is a hatch, uh, but I'll tell you the hatch is difficult to find Um, and inside he's got a control panel. Um, with a bunch of screens. I'll show you these screens actually. Um, here, this is a better view. I'm going to download these real quick so he can see everything outside through those cameras, but the cameras have the, the bulletproof glass. He also installed um, air compressors. This with, is insane with hoses that go out to the the portholes. So if they get dirty, he can shoot air over them and clean them off with those air compressors. And so this is his, this is inside. So he's got this is 2004. So those were cutting edge TV screens. Um, what? So a bunch of TVs in there. Uh, so you can control it from inside. Who's this guy? I don't know who that is. I want to say it's a local police officer or something like that. I'm, I'm not sure. He also has on all four directions um, openings where he's got guns mounted and the gun goes through, but there's no like air or anything like that. So it's not possible to be shot through but he can have the gun sticking out and move it around outside. So it's completely sealed, but the gun sticks out. There's air that can get in though. Well, he's got he's got it like so the gun goes through. Yeah, but he can breathe steel. Well, yeah, so he installed an air conditioning unit and it's got it goes through. He's got this whole piping system. So that way like you can't shoot through their air conditioning unit or anything like that because it's not it's not a one way route. So it like moves through and moves around. So it's not possible for so he spent a year making a thing that he in his mind can just level the town. Is that his plan? So on June 4th, 2004 uh, at two o'clock in the afternoon, broad daylight <laughs> the, 2 p.m. Uh, uh, the tank busts through the walls of the shop because now it's not fitting through the door. Oh, yeah, now it's too big. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm going to get it out there though. <laughs> so it just busts through the wall of the shop goes across the street to Cody's uh, concrete batch plant and just starts ramming the whole building and like nailing it, like lifting the bulldozer up and down and like destroying. There's the no students. video of this or anything. No, there's lots of video of it. Oh, I'd love to see some. <laughs> I've got photos. I can show you video maybe in the after the fiddle okay. that we've already filmed. <laughs> Great, uh, but uh, they he's he's ramming my it. My cheeks and hurt. Lifting. <laughs> Excuse me. I have pain in my cheeks. <laughs> what for? 
the B12, <laughs> all that excess. Um, my cheeks got to hurt too. <laughs> now that you've mentioned it, a I can't bit. open my mouth. <laughs> kind of sore. Mm-hmm. It's all the laughter. I'm sure. Uh, so, and he's he's wrecking this this building. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, everybody who works there is like, "What is happening right now?" And so, Cody. It's pretty clear what's happening right now. There's a <laughs> there's a reinforced concrete bulldozer <laughs> hitting your building. I don't know how that could be more clear. Cody uh, has a handgun and Cody just starts shooting at this thing with no effect. Nothing's happening. Obviously, yeah. this is very reinforced. And so uh, he goes and he gets his bulldozer, which is a significantly smaller bulldozer. It is. It's a normal size. We're bulldozer. battle botting this thing right now. <laughs> uh, and the Someone comes down one of those little caterpillar things. And like, hey, what do you, you know? Come <laughs> what on, are what are you gonna, doing? What are you do Just that? put that away. And so he goes and he rams uh, uh, the tank with the bulldozer, and it is so much heavier. Like he tries to lift it with his bulldozer, it actually lifts him his tank, and so he the lift gets caught and starts lifting him backwards. And so he backs up and tries to ram it again, and no effect. He's just freaking wrecking his concrete shop right in front of him while he's trying to stop him with the bulldozer. And then uh, his employees, they start trying to take metal rods and shove it in the treads to like stop it, break it. And it's just bending and snapping these metal rods. Like this is like a, this is a beefcake bulldozer, you know, like this is not, this ain't no, this ain't no backyard bulldozer. This is (laughs) is a serious bulldozer. Um, And uh, the police show up. And the police are like, I, I don't know what to do. We got to grab this. our bulldozer. <laughs> I don't know what we should do with this. So the police start shooting at it, uh, but it's not having any effect. Um, and he is just like ignoring all the cops, and he's just nailing this building over and over again, backing up and lifting his his bulldozer arm and crushing the. Heck he's out just of leveling it. their building. Yeah. After forty five minutes of him just repeatedly ramming this building, he turns around and now there's a lot of cops here just unloading on he this started tank. hitting all the police cars Well, he turns around and he just runs like full speed towards this barrier. A bunch of cops are are hiding behind and they all have to like dive out of the way and he just destroys this barrier grand theft auto five stars baby <laughs> and so he then leaves uh, leaves the concrete shop and he goes on this long rampage around town going to all the people who've wronged him the newspaper guy's house. Yeah, so he goes to uh, from here. He goes to the newspaper like the actual office levels the office goes to town hall levels town hall Starts going to all the different people's homes of the people who were like in the town council goes to the town grocery store, which is owned by the people like one of the guys in the town council and is literally just going from place to place to place. Um, leveling different spots all around town. And so these are um, this is a map of everywhere he went. So there's the news station. There is gambles, which is the local grocery store. The town hall and the library was one of them. Uh, and then the concrete batch plant was just copy cat graphics and printing. Yeah, so anyone he leveled the bank. Yeah, anyone who's wronged him in any way he's going and he's leveling their uh, their building. So pretty quickly, the police start get, getting wind of what's going on here. They're like, oh, this is that guy. And they're like, we know everyone he hates. And so they start calling all these places and they're like, you guys need to leave. Like you need to like yeah, leave. Building, is he town. hurting anybody? So he's not hurting anybody. There's debate on whether he wants to hurt anyone or not because when he like shot at Cody, he shot in the bucket of uh, of uh, of his bulldozer. Okay. And so they're like, did he miss or was he trying to like warn him and be like back off? I'm doing this. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, uh, and so it's are unclear. you intimidated now? Are you intimidated now? He's like, yeah, I am intimidated. Could you please stop? Please stop. Uh, and so he goes from uh, uh, from building to building to building, and it's just he everywhere he's going, he's getting debris covered in this thing, and that's why he put those air compressors so it could blow all the bricks and the dust away from his camera views so he can oh continue my gosh. on his rampage. Um, at one point in the rampage, a cop was like, I'm going to get up there and ran up and climbed up on top of it and started trying to find the access door. Couldn't find the access door and ends up starting just shooting inside his air conditioning unit, but he had designed the air conditioning unit so that yep. wouldn't do anything. Um, so then they toss him uh, flashbangs and he starts dropping flashbangs down in the air conditioning unit. No effect. And so nothing is working. They are literally at, by one point. It is literally a convoy of SWAT team and cops that are just walking along with this thing 
shooting at it, jumping on it, throwing stuff in it, trying this to thing is huge. Yeah, it's gigantic. This is not like a little bulldozer. This is this is 15 feet tall. This is a massive, massive bulldozer and it's just wrecking the town, um, creating absolute havoc. Uh, at one point they go and they get um, uh, they call them scrapers. They're those really long for like when they're putting down roads and they're the really long yeah. tractors that have that kind of like diagonal scraper in the middle and they're like, oh, we can stop it with that and he just pushes it right out of the way and just keeps going. N- no problem whatsoever. Um, he goes down to this Excel Energy plant, yeah. and that is um, a power station that also has a bunch of propane tanks. And he parks there, and for ten minutes he's trying to shoot the propane tanks. But his design of his uh, his tank, he couldn't get the right angle on oh, it, and so he kept dang. missing. What's uh, significant is that was the one part of this whole event that could have actually been really tragic. Because the blast radius, those these aren't like home propane tanks. Yeah, yeah, the like, propane. Yeah, these yeah. are massive propane tanks, and they think that that would have leveled like entire blocks of the town if he actually got a shot off because he was firing incendiary area rounds into them. Right. So it would have been uh, a major disaster, but he never got the shot off. Eventually, he ditched that, gave up on that, and went to gambles, which is where um, he ended the whole ordeal. Um, at this point, allegedly, and there's some debate whether this is true or not. Allegedly, the um, the National Guard was scrambling and they were sending Apache helicopters to shoot him, shoot him like with rockets because yeah. like this is a tank. We need to deal with it like it's a tank. The police aren't going to be able to stop this thing, right? Um, and so uh, somehow he started linking coolant and so it is leaking coolant smoking really bad. He's going to gambles. He nails gambles. Uh, which is a grocery store. And I guess what he didn't know, what most of the locals didn't know is Gambles had a basement. And so he nails Gambles and it slips into the basement and he obviously gets stuck. He can't get out. And so oh. he's stuck in there. And so the police now create like this perimeter and yeah. they're now he's got to, he has to come out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're like, they're like what's he going to do next? Like, did he rig it with explosives for a situation like this? Like what's, what's the next step? Um, and he ends up taking his own life. They mm-hmm. hear the shot and then, they spend two days trying to get into it. They finally get into it early in the morning. Two days later, um, where was the hatch? Well, there what once they got inside, they found that there was a hatch, but it was not like noticeable from the outside. They never found it from the outside. What they ended up actually doing is they burnt a hole in the side of it and with a, a welding like, toward. Yeah. yeah, and that's how they got in and that's how we got the pictures of the inside um, and after the whole ordeal, they went through and they like obviously searched his home and they found two hours worth of tapes of him chronicling this whole year long thing of him building this tank and why he was doing it and who he was targeting and why he was targeting them. So he was doing a get ready with me as I build a war machine. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much get ready with me as I build a war machine to take on my neighbors. (laughs) And so he to intimidate my neighbors my neighbors. Well, it's uh, it's pretty sad because if you listen to it, it's very clearly someone who had too much time on his hands and didn't have a lot of friends to talk through yeah. this with, or did, just chose not to talk through it with his friends, and like drove himself insane. Yeah, because um, they, get, I'm sure they get progressively crazier. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, by the end, he's literally saying, um, "I've been trying to get caught, but I'm not getting caught, and so that must mean that this is a sign from God that this is what I'm supposed to do." Yeah, that's I'm what I'm saying. He just teach. gets progressively. Yeah. He's like, I'm supposed to teach these people a lesson that they can't behave like this, that they can't treat people like this. They've backed me into a corner. What am I supposed to do now? And he's like, I'm, I'm confident that the reason why God never allowed me to be married and never allowed me to start a family was so that way I could fulfill my purpose. And this is my purpose. Um, and yeah, uh, and so he did this. Nobody was injured in the whole event except for him. Um, but a, a lot of property damage, a lot of property damage. Yeah. What uh, was the total damage? Uh, I, know? Don't, I don't know what the here. Let's see if I can check on that. Yeah. Um, but he uh, uh, when I was single and couldn't find anybody to date me, I also thought I was like, maybe God's got another purpose for me and I'm supposed to bulldoze this <laughs> bulldoze town does this whole town. It's mountain town. Thank man. God Reagan came along, <laughs> you know, uh, so uh, he the the town they obviously sees the thing um, and they said we don't want anyone to like take souvenirs or anything of it, so they disassembled it and dispersed it to a bunch of different scrap yards. Okay, which is interesting to me. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of I guess I see the motivation, but at the same time, like 
It's a cool bulldozer. <laughs> You're the I reason. Save the bulldozer. You're the reason. You're exactly why they did that. <laughs> it's a cool bulldozer. Um, so the damage uh, of the whole thing was estimated to be around seven million. Yeah. Um, Two million of which was that concrete plant, which was underinsured. So they only got a payout of seven hundred thousand. Oh, uh, so they just kind of stomached one point three million in loss off that. Um, yeah. So it was a major, major event. Um, it was televised all over, at least uh, the state of Colorado and definitely the nation. Um, uh, and uh, he got his justice, I guess, kind of. Uh, that's the killdozer. They nicknamed it the killdozer, even though nobody was killed by it. Um, but it Jeez. does. It does. Look it was massive. pretty killer. I mean, this is it. Uh, I mean, it's a big dozer. I mean, and you never know when someone's just gonna do that, you know? Yeah. I mean, he was he was for a year building he was this working thing. on it. Like that is a determination. Like it's one thing to be like, oh man, I want to punch. What that is there anything the you spent a year on? Like <laughs> in general, or like yeah. anything crazy. I know just uh, anything you've like you're like oh, I've worked on this for like a year. I mean, yeah, like my career, this podcast. Stupid. My relationship. I'm talking about like, you know, I mean, I've put so many years into RuneScape and like some <laughs> model train sets. Oh, I guess I have done that with City Skylines. I've built some there cities you go. forever. Yeah. Here. Yeah. I don't know what else. Oh, there is that bulldozer that I built. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it's like armored reinforced. Got yeah. some gun holes in it. It just seems like, like some excess. Shoot something. Excess energy. The best energy drink you'll ever taste. The good, th- the best thing about it, you can only get it from that one door dasher. You know what Jesus says? <laughs> I am I way. Am way. <laughs> <laughs> I am truth. I am watch. I didn't know Amway was a Christian company. It is. Yeah. Amway. Give them ten percent of your income. <laughs> <laughs> oh yikes! Anyways, uh, so th- yeah, that's the the story of uh, Martin wow. Hemeyer, the killdozer. Um, Sorry, we talked for seventeen minutes before we got to the good story. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I think that story was pretty good. <laughs> Hey, uh, thanks for checking out this episode. Uh, if you liked it, you can subscribe or watch some more episodes or some clips. Um, but then I, I need to make this like 20 seconds. My producer said it has to be longer, so I'm just going to keep talking for a little bit. And is this long enough, Connor? Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, thanks for being here. <laughs>